Hi, well I'm in Walsall today and the building behind me is the Walsall Leather Museum. In fact it used to be an old leather works. And it's a lovely building in its own right and there's some fascinating displays inside on leather work. Well a huge leather trade developed in Walsall and it built up and around about the turn of the century it, it was absolutely massive, around about 1900. And each family in the town pretty well had one person working in the leather trade. There is still today quite an active leather trade, but it's not at the scale that it was. But it became famous for making all sorts of things. And you can just imagine working in some of these workshops, and there are lovely you know, pictures in the museum showing what, what the conditions were like. This little chart shows the growth a uh, number of leather workers, and you can see it really does go up sort of exponentially. And when you look at some of the products that were being made, so we have things like saddles here, and you get race saddles, polo, gents, ladies, steeplechase, military, you know, a whole range, and going to all sorts of countries all around the world. So the industry itself was absolutely massive. And at the museum, they've captured all of this very nicely, and they've got some very nice displays. There's a good selection of tools here of the leather workers' trade, and these ones are called slickers and they're used for flattening the leather, for evening out the bumps, for squeezing out the water and liquids. And they could have steel blades or they could have glass or terracotta, but they all performed a similar sort of function. This is a hook. It would have been attached to a very long, sort of like six foot long pole and would have been used for moving the leather from tanning pit to tanning pit. This rather vicious two-handed saw type scraping tool is called a saw-toothed fleshing knife and it would be used for removing the flesh from the hide and the hide you know, would be spread across a beam and then the saw-toothed edge would be used on the skins. There's a whole different variety of levers here, wouldn't mind a few of these. Thick ones, thin ones, just shows you the variety of that levers really, what they look like, different types, printed levers, finished levers, stylized. <laughs> Quite a nice little range in some of the more colourful ones down here. And what I like, nice veg tan levers. I enjoyed reading these displays about currying leather. Currying is basically, it's, um, once you've got your tanned leather and part of the process is to get fat and grease into it. And quite a lot of the leather belts I sell are hand curried. So they've been worked especially to make the leather lovely and strong and firm. And I spent some time actually reading through all about how currying was done and it's summarised on this poster. That's the nice thing about it, you can take your time, it wasn't busy at the museum, looking around and really learning quite a lot about the leather trade. Quite interesting heavy roller here for giving a texture to the surface of a leather, in this case making it look like an alligator or crocodile skin. And it's like a, a brass or a bronze roller and it's got this pattern on the outside, you can imagine that being rolled like a rolling pin across the leather to make it take up that pattern which of course you can do if it's been vegetable tanned and it's damp. These look rather fascinating, they're Carrier's recipe books written in the 1920s. So there's ingredients, colours and stains for dyeing the leather. Apparently some of them nowadays wouldn't be allowed because they would be hazardous and probably give you cancer or something. This is rather a nice item, it's a horseshoe case. So a bit like you might carry a spare wheel for your car you could carry a spare horseshoe for your horse. Some of the displays gave a really good insight into what working life would have been like and quite a strong community. Uh, large groups of people working together. You can imagine little sort of jokes and things that go on. But looking into those pictures, you really could imagine what it would be like to work with those people. And I felt the whole museum was actually very well put together. There was really sort of factual information about the tools and about the levers and there was also about the social history and about the trade and how it developed. It would be the kind of museum I think anyone would find interesting but particularly if you, you know, enjoy leather working. There were some very nice pieces which were made by modern day makers. So for example, 
this bag by McGregor and Michael. Now, they've done a very nice book on leather working, going through the detail of hand stitching and leather craft in general. It's a very good book, I'd recommend it. But some of their work was here, and it was nice to see it close up and to examine the detail, the quality of their workmanship is superb. And you still find myself looking at the stitching and looking at the moulding of the leather shapes. And also, with some of this more modern leather work, looking at the artistry behind it. But some of it's quite sort of modern and quite adventurous. But you get little ideas. It's a bit like looking around at woodworking uh, exhibitions. You pick up little thoughts and ideas and you think, oh yes, you know, I might incorporate that into a project one of these days. A couple of very nice skiving machines there. So that one is a little bit like my own, Dixon's. And then all the tools, and I think I've got most of these sorts of tools. Ah, that little gas supply bar, presumably, for giving light, although it may have been also for warming the leather. Here's a heater for heating up the tools make nice crease lines etc. A very worn box of threads. One of these rather wonderful old, like a very large patch of the British United shoe machines for stitching. Look at that. A bit of serious stitching power on that. So this is very interesting. It's Joseph Dixon's catalogue. Got all their tools there, laid out as a sheet. So quite a nice project, a stitching horse. I haven't really got space for one of these, but if I did, it would certainly be on my list. So you've got your like your clams there, and you have a foot pedal down below, and they're often serrated so that they clamp shut or so sort of keep tight. It's quite nice. Oh yeah. This one's got little slots for locking in at different positions and then the leather strap takes up the tension so you get a fair bit of closure on the clam blades. So it's just hinged on the one side here. It's quite a Simple but kind of clever design. That's the foot lever there. I think this foot lever should actually be coming across like that. Yeah, but they've obviously tucked it aside so it doesn't trip people up. Nice selection of horse collars here, and these are being stuffed with rye straw. And you could actually mould your collar to fit your own horse if you dampened it and then pressed it around. Yeah, the steps for making a bridle. And quite interesting seating actually. First one is to cut out the strips of leather. Well, That's exactly what I do with belts. Next one is to finish the edges by removing the sharp corners of the leather to prevent discomfort to the rider and horse. Dye the edges and polish them. Well, again, exactly what I do with belts. And then grease the strip of leather to make them look more finished with a hot crease, creasing iron or vein. Again, exactly what I do. And mark the holes for the stitching using a pricking arm, thin the leather where required with a splitting machine and stitch the leather parts together holding the leather firmly in a clamp. So yeah, I do all those sorts of processes. Nice little set of pictures to go with it. You can imagine the smell of leather in that workshop. Must have been rather nice. But overpowering if you're a cat. I just share the craft really so that people see yes. different things. I'll give you a card in a minute. If you oh, want yeah. to see any films, you can. Yes. <laughs> one of my friends has got one of these. Um, I had the 133, which was a even slightly larger still than that's the 45, isn't it? That one, I think. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? But, um, just get these nice stools, they're so wonderful. <laughs> We've got 
one in here, it's a three-legged one. Is it? All right. And, that, um, you think they'd all be three-legged in a way? This yeah. It's got a lovely old elm spot. Well. the three-legged ones were specially made for uneven floorboards. Yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah, I like milking ones. That's quite an old one, isn't it? Because that's yeah. got an elm top yeah. one. I hope you enjoyed seeing around the museum. I certainly enjoyed it. And actually, I got rather distracted talking to the staff there. Uh, some of them have been working as leather workers for many, many years as cutter outs, glove makers, etc. And very nice people, very interesting to hear their stories and have a chat with them. So, if you're passing Walsall, it's certainly worth the detour. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Had a laugh. Just outside the museum on the way back. And what do I see? The tannery fish bar rather appropriately named.